Yeah, yeah, but I think three of us. All right. So, uh, very good afternoon to each and everyone who joined this 15th lecture of the EDTU Chancellor's Lecture Series. And a special welcome to our eminent speaker for today, Dr. Binoy Kumar Saikia. Uh, even though we are welcoming you today on a virtual platform, we will be loving to have you here on our campus someday, very soon. So uh, without much ado, I would like to introduce our, the speaker for today, uh, Dr. Binoy Kumar Saikia, a young scientist who is known in the scientific fraternity all over India for his wonderful work that he has been doing. So he is currently the principal scientist at Northeast Institute of Science and Technology that is NIST at Jurhat. He's also the group leader of the Coal and Energy Research Group in the Material Science and Technology Division of NIST. His research interests span energy and environment in general, and in particular, chemistry and technology of coal, carbon, and nanomaterials, atmospheric aerosols, and air pollution. He has developed and patented, both in India and the US, a technology for the production of blue fluorescent carbon quantum dots from Indian coal. Dr. Saikia earned his MSc degree in inorganic chemistry from Gohanti University in 2001 and PhD degree from Dibrugarh University in 2008. He is the recipient of numerous honors and awards, which include the Santi Shuru Bhatnagar Prize for Science and Technology in 2021 for his contributions to Earth, Atmosphere, Ocean, and Planetary Sciences. The Professor Dr. M. P. Singh Memorial Coal Science Award in 2019 from the Mining, Geological, and Metallurgical Institute of India. The IIME Coal Beneficiation Award in 2015 from the Indian Institute of Mineral Engineers. And the MESA Award that was in 2014 from the Mineral Engineering Science Association of India. Dr. Saikia is an associate member of the Indian Institute of Chemical Engineers, is a fellow of the Geological Society of India, a member of International X-ray Absorption Society Italy, and member of the Indian Science Congress Association. He has numerous publications in high-impact journals to his credit. Uh, I checked Scopus today and Scopus shows 129 documents to his credit with 2,331 citations and an H index of 27 as of today. So today, uh, Dr. Saikia will be speaking on indigenously developed carbon quantum dots in India, a technological outcome under Atmonivar Fara. So I'll now pass on the platform to uh, Dr. Saikia. So over to you, Dr. Saikia. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you uh, for, uh, for the, you know, for the... Uh, Long introduction. Uh, first of all, um, uh, let me uh, address you know, the honorable vice chancellor of uh, some down university and the deans of research, deans of uh, other faculties, and professors, senior professors and uh, other present members in this event, particularly Dr. Provisor, our retired I mean, ex-chief scientist. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I have been uh, told by the director, sir, once I met him in Guanti to give a talk to come to the university. Uh, and then I told, yes, I will, I will, I will join. But you know, I was planning, I was thinking in my mind that I'll go Gohati and physically, and because I want to see the university. I have been heard about the university for a long time. So I want to uh, see or I want to visit or I want to get explored what is, you know, however, the, however these and what are the subjects or research going on. So, but you know, there is a conference today ongoing in Royal Society of Chemistry and Institute, so I could not attend. 
because I have some other things to do with your conference. So this was the reason and let me start, you know, let me uh, say something about uh, particularly my journey, you know, I mean, the, our journey towards the uh, development of a indigenous technology on the, uh, on the, um, yeah on the uh, uh, development of a very, very futuristic uh, carbon nanometer. I hope this slide is uh, viewable from your side. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah. So actually, uh, just I want to say our journey and how we have uh, developed or a process which is a very futuristic and very, very interesting, not only to the material science, but also to the uh, biological science, you know, medical science. Uh, you know, a lot of research is going on this material. So basically, if I say uh, about my earlier research, I was doing uh, work on the uh, this uh, uh, coal resources. You know, these are the fuel energy resources of this region. Particularly, uh, we have the northeastern. Then all of you know that a lot of you know mineral resources are there. So. Uh, I was appointed as a scientist in 2011 and I started to work with senior scientists on the, uh, on the clean, making cleaner coal or cleaner, cleaner fuel so that it can be utilized in power industry or thermal electric pieces. So uh, I worked for uh, uh, three, four years and I found that uh, we cannot uh, make it you know, uh, clean for particular and uh, for power applications because it is sulfur and sulfur is uh, very, very impossible. From that, uh, from my point of view, it is impossible and we should not waste our time on this removal uh, of sulfur. So I also place the agenda to the research company that we have to stop this, you know, removal of sulfur on the coal because it is it is not required. You know, we can go through other options. And it was approved by research council. And then I submitted a project on uh, you know recovery of carbon from coal to make uh, carbon is you know carbon. Uh, Carbon nanomaterials, so that this can be utilized. You know, this can be utilized for uh, different uh, high-end applications, including medical science. So then the project was approved, and we have developed a process. You can see in the figure that we have made the you know very very large-scale amount of carbon quantum dot soluble in water from the coal, which has not only the value but also it has a very very fantastic uh, properties like the fluorescence. So this fluorescence property is very useful in because it emits color when it gets exposed to the external light source. So that can be utilized as a diagnostic application so the visibility is there. So that's why, uh, yeah, this is, I think, known to all, but, you know, uh, I just wanted to show if some faculties or some members have not idea about this. We have a very, very, you know, we are a multidisciplinary institute. So the, I keep this slide so that somebody uh, can have an idea what is going on. We have not only the material science, but also the biological, chemical engineering and also uh, uh, geoscience and technology. And this is a photo of my research group, but uh, of course it is the latest research group and they are doing on different energy as well as environmental research. So uh, so, so what I, I was telling that the carbon dot or the carbon quantum dot is most futuristic and we can see if you go to the literature, uh, we can see that uh, you know everybody started working on carbon quantum dot. But not uh, when I was start. I, I was starting to work, but now I have seen that a lot of university and I did started to work on the carbon quantum dot because this carbon quantum dot is not only having the fluorescence property, but you know it has a it has it is non toxic. The most uh, significant property is that it is less toxic, and in some time it is not non toxic. So it can be utilized in the health sector, in the human you know in the medical science or the detection and the diagnostic application it can be utilized. And these are nothing uh, but less than 10 nanometer size carbon crystals, crystalline or sometimes amorphous also. This is less than 10 nanometer size of crystalline or amorphous carbons. And as I told that, it is not only application to the material, but also to the medicine, sensors, and the catalysis. And the, another most important thing is that this emission, this fluorescence emission, that can be controlled. I mean, that can be tuned as per our requirements. I mean, the emission wavelength can be changed with the help of uh, modification of the uh, carbon quantum dot. It has functional groups, so uh, or the size effects are there, so that can be 
uh, exhaust state or directly will diminish as per requirement. So these two properties, one is uh, its non-toxicity, another is it's, uh, it, it can be modif uh, modified or tunable, and another is a biocompatibility, that means uh, no toxic. So it is water uh, soluble. So other nanoparticle, I mean the uh, other conventional uh, the, or the traditional metal, metal uh, I mean metallic nanoparticles, they are uh, have a high, I mean they have a toxic effect. And there is also research area, the people are working on the toxic effect evaluation of metal nanoparticles. So um, uh, you know, research has already started to work on the toxic effects of metal nanoparticles. So this carbon quantum dot, I, I thought at the time that it, will, uh, it has a future. So we should work on to, on how to make a large amount. You know, the people are working on very smaller scale, so how to make a large amount. Then if we see in the literature, we found that a lot of processes are uh, utilized, but I have found that those processes may not be scalable or may not be, uh, uh, may not be uh, applied to industrial, uh, industrial scale. And also that may have uh, involved high amount of uh, energy and cost expenditure. So then uh, we selected the two things. You can see the right side that the chemical oxidation and ultrasonic synthesis, where uh, we can use some of the green chemicals or some of the uh, water-like, you know, water or hydrogen peroxide. And then the energy will apply the ultrasonic wave, which is a, which is a non-polluting uh, kind of energy. And the source, uh, uh, I've seen that the people, I mean, some uh, they are utilizing some of the source which are not scalable or where supply chain is not uh, there because I you know the orange juice or the uh, carbohydrate or ascorbic acid cannot be a good supply chain if we go for the industrial scale up. Then, because I was working on coal, that's why I thought, why not use this coal and let us see uh, what uh, what we can we can get results if we go for the uh, scale up or the oxygen study. Then actually this was the, uh, this figure shows the, our, uh, our uh, motivation that if we could use these abundant carbon sources and we make a quantum dot, that could be a less expensive, uh, expensive because the raw material is available and also uh, this coal is used for the, as we know that coal is used for the energy production or the combustion. So if we uh, stop or if we reduce the combustion and if there is an alternative utilization, maybe in the future after 10, 20 years, uh, this coal could be a source of uh, this such type of um, uh, fissure thing that i So there will be a, a reduction of pollution, reduction of emissions. Also. That, that was also our motivation to uh, stop the environmental pollution from the coal because uh, because many of the countries, including the US, uh, uh, Germany, and uh, uh, even um, South Africa also trying to stop the coal combustion. So maybe India can, uh, India also may stop over 10 years or 20 years. So this will be an alternative uh, uh, technology for our country. So just uh, if I, uh, whatever I told it is uh, a summary of this type of summary. So our processes, which has been developed in uh, NIST, uh, the first is that it is, you know, uh, it absorbs uh, solar light and also low cost of production and also it can be tunable as far as emission uh, wavelength and the other interesting because somebody can uh, somebody asks that you know uh, coal is toxic so you know how uh, it's uh, produced quantum dot has any uh, uh, toxicity so but the, we have proved that this uh, carbon quantum dot are not toxic and uh, it is it is water soluble or biocompatible and the uh, uh, finally this uh, emission property has a uh, very interesting property to go for other like you no know, uh, uh, diagnostic applications. So um, I was uh, this process uh, scale up, you know, uh, the flow state, if you can see, it's a very, very simple process we have developed. Um, first, the, there is oxidation of uh, the raw material. And then after oxidation, there is a process of, you know, uh, ultrasonic uh, uh, wave and the ultrasonic energy application, then the neutralization and after neutralization, there is a, uh, maybe that is something, you know, technical, uh, highly, highly technical, I can say. Otherwise, this process, anybody can prepare. Yeah, very simple. Uh, the uh, filtration process involves uh, ultra filtration, which is, uh, uh, you know, like a uh, membrane. Uh, we have used some membrane. 
Then after uh, filtration, we got a huge amount, you know, large amount of carbon dioxide solution, having a very considerable or very you know, higher properties which is available in commercial, already available in the commercial level. So this process, uh, when uh, we have uh, developed the process in uh, 2000, uh, uh, 2017 or 69, then I contacted uh, some of the industry, you know, from uh, Sigma and Rick was one of the industry and they, uh, they are so much interested, they made me four or five calls, you know, video call and telephone call. Then I talked that it should be patented in, in USA also, uh, although it's already patented file in India. Then, uh, then we patented in US also now recently in 2020 it has been granted. So there is a, uh, uh, I found there only two patents uh, similarly uh, similar or maybe uh, using as a coal as a raw material. But our patent was the first time it has a higher efficient properties than the other patent uh, uh, recently done in US. So uh, if I speak something chemistry, then uh, you can see that coal is nothing but, uh, you know, it consists of carbon, hydrogen, and also it has some minerals or inorganic, uh, that is S, uh, S is a S correlates with the inorganic component. So uh, the advantage was the carbon, it has more than 70, uh, 70 to uh, 80, 70 to 80% or 75% carbons are there because coal is, you know, widely, distributed in Assam, Meghalaya, Meghalaya. So, but particularly these all coals having a similar properties with, because those, these coals quality or the grade is same. So there is no any issue with the, the chemistry, but uh, yes, there is of course uh, some variation with the property uh, of the carbon quantum of synthesis depending on the carbon percentage. We have tested that this carbon percentage uh, uh, have some effect on the uh, concentration of quantum meal, I mean the concentration of carbon dot or the uh, quantum meal of the carbon quantum dot. And these coals is having the functional group and also the nitrogen uh, atoms were there. And uh, actually, uh, the, the, I was not, uh, uh, when I was working and that, I was not correlating the things, but later I found that, you know, our northeastern coal is unique to the other Indian coals because we tested to the other parts of the coal of, the, of our country and also uh, outside of the country we have tested, we found that uh, this northeastern coal is having a, you know, you can see the Raman spectra D and Z band and uh, the, there is uh, some small, you know, short lens graphitic, uh, graphitic layers are there, short lens, not the bigger molecule, the, the graphitic, uh, uh, I mean, the aromatic crystals, aromatic domains are very short lens, which is very, uh, very simple or very easy to break into a smaller carbon uh, carbon nanometer. So you can see the Roman spectra, very prominent uh, peak in the D and Z positions. Then after synthesizing, I mean, the uh, when you got the quantum dot, uh, we have, uh, yeah, of course, we have uh, looked into the, <coughs> look into the uh, TEM electron microscope, uh, transmitted electron microscope. And you could see the smaller particles in the above two images. And uh, uh, yes, they are not only the less than uh, 10 nanometer particle uh, I mean quantum dots, but they also have some particle in below 10 nanometers. Uh, those may be graphene quantum dots, but the majority majority particles are in the less than 10 nanometer uh, sizes. And uh, this uh, right image you can we can we, I have shown that the uh, Water soluble uh, quantum dot in, in terms of visible light, and uh, when we expose, you know, UV light, or I, we have also tested laser uh, light. There, there's a uh, we got a prominent blue fluorescence, which indicates that uh, it is in the visible region and it could be utilized for further study. And the another, uh, this uh, very very interesting uh, thing is that actually people, uh, this is a very latest. Uh, 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 research, I mean, latest publication we have made. Sorry. <clears throat> this is the latest publication we have got uh, these things. Actually, what the uh, current researcher is doing, they are, they are doping with quantum dot with nitrogen and sulfur. But by the grace of God, our core already have a nitrogen and sulfur. So uh, we have studied the uh, derived quantum dot from coal and we found that there is, uh, you know, significantly uh, the nitrogen and sulfur 
atoms are domi uh, dominant uh, in the quantum dot. So they are already in the there, and 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 uh, this is um, uh, is a major contribution for the for their emission for the emission parameters and the quality. So uh, then it, uh, then we have done the, its uh, chemical uh, functionality as well the, as well as the chemical bonding of the carbon, and we found that the sulfur and nitrogen is already uh, bonded with the carbon, and the nitrogen is also bonded with the carbon. So, and uh, their bonding is, uh, uh, you know, not only the single carbon oxygen uh, bone, but also the double bone. So, these things, as actually, these things is the actually, uh, you know, there is a scope of working in this uh, nitrogen and sulfur code law because uh, the sulfur and the sulfur in the coal, which I thought in the earlier that we should stop on working on sulfur, then, we, I, then later I, I, I found that the sulfur is the, you know, gift for this coal to making a, a, making a very unique uh, carbon nanometry or sorry, carbon quantum dot. And it's having a very uh, significant properties. And those functional groups also, because of the functional groups, the emission, uh, which I told that it can be tunable or modified. If we can, if we can change the concentration of the functional groups like hydroxyl and carbonyl, then definitely, uh, this is actually ongoing one one project we are working to make a white light emission uh, LED out of this uh, out of quantum dot. We are going to manage, you know, so if, if someone can uh, work on this functional group and can change the concentration, definitely there will be the, the range of the emission will be bigger, then uh, we can go for the other light emission. And then if we go for the, if we, if we can success in the white light emitting LED, I think this is, is going to be very, very uh, great achievement if somebody can work. So this also we are also trying to do. So uh, yeah, so what I told that uh, it is uh, it is uh, depends on the excitation source as well as the its uh, uh, structure. Now we have tested with different exposure of light. Then we found that uh, yes, its emission is uh, you know there's a shift of emission, but you can see the four uh, the shift uh, the band is between. 400 to around 500 or 480. So in between, there's a sifting, which uh, depending upon the excitation of the UV. And uh, uh, this bond actually we have, we are trying to now make it wider so that we can go for uh, for white light emitting. So, uh, and also uh, the lifetime, which is very, very important. You can see the uh, right image, the below image, the lifetime of the emission is much higher than the existing quantum dot available in the market because life the time of uh, fluorescence uh, this is very very important parameter if the emission light exists for much uh, higher time then it can be utilized for you know uh, like uh, the application the, uh, the practical applications as are better i mean the more is there Yes, that I told that uh, we have tested not only with the Indian coal, but uh, we tested with the US anthracite coal and uh, uh, other like petroleum coal or other rank coal like bituminous uh, and also with the uh, subbituminous, which is our, our coal. Then we found that you could see the quantum mill, which is, very, which is the most significant parameter, quantum mill. Uh, if somebody if somebody wants a uh, uh, quantum dot, then he will ask for the quantum mill. So then, because there is a, uh, if quantum mill is in a higher side, that their their intensity of the emission or the absorption of the photons will be higher. So we found that our basically the our coal or the, our work has you could see the last uh, sub bituminous coal, which is our Indian or North Eastern, North East Indian coal, a mass higher. And in sigma and rig, because why they're interested, they are having less than 10% of quantum mill. So we got around 17% of quantum mill. So you know, they got uh, so much interested that uh, yes, it could be uh, a good uh, product for selling. And then we optimize. We have also uh, as a as a chemical uh, as a chemistry or as a process chemistry, we have optimized the process uh, with the variation with the hydrogen peroxide concentration, raw materials time of ultrasonic and the frequency. So after that, all uh, possible optimization, we found that maximum, whatever the coal of this region, then uh, or whatever the concentration, then we have minimum of 10% of quantum will be there. And then we developed a reactor, 
on the basis of the uh, these things we uh, developed a reactor in which uh, currently we can give one liter of quantum dot if anybody wants because it is a very um, this is a very ingeniously designed type so the reactor and in this is the development reactor which our own facility at least our own engineers then uh, we found that uh, we can give around uh, one liter of carbon uh, quantum load from uh, uh, from coal with a very uh, less time and less step. So this is the uh, just a summary of the uh, parameters. We because concentration also is a very uh, important parameter to go for the other applications like you know cell biology study or the, if we go for detection of cells or if we go for uh, sensing then concentration is very much in, uh, important. So we found that we we, we go up, uh, up to um, 13, uh, 12, 5 milligram per ml, and then um, also this uh, uh, one time up to uh, 17 percent. So mechanism, uh, you know, uh, there should be a mechanism actually. Uh, so we are we are we are we're trying to. Uh, uh, make a mechanism on the basis because coal is a heterogeneous chemistry. If anybody knows about coal, coal is you know it's a heterogeneous chemistry. It has not all not only carbon but also hydrogen, oxygen, uh, inorganic. So uh, how what is happening there? Then we have uh, on the basis of their results and the, on the basis of the uh, product, we on the end product and the process, uh, we design we uh, postulate a mechanism. Uh, which is you can see as I imagine in this slide, you know, coal. I told that this our reason coal is unique and having these small uh, aromatic uh, domains like the like the A in this uh, slide. So which is all which is also functionalized. So those aromatic domains are uh, we thought uh, you know we assume that it got oxidized and it is uh, carbon oxygen bone formation is there and as well as. When we're applying the ultrasonic energy, those are breakage, and in, in the same time, there is also the uh, bone breakage, you know, carbon bone breakage. And then finally, we've got the small crystals, uh, small carbon um, uh, crystals, uh, no first carbon with the function line, and those are nothing but the carbon quantum dot. So, this is a mechanism we have suggested, but uh, this cannot be proved with the analytical evidence. Uh, only the uh, basis of the model reactions, model structure we are postulating, but it is accepted in the SCS journals. So uh, this is the reactor. You know why I told as an indigenous technology because uh, you know uh, after the uh, when uh, during the execution of the project, uh, our engineering divisions uh, we have collaborated and uh, I asked that so there will be uh, you know uh, five steps so can you design a facility then and uh, they design by themselves uh, ourselves and. Uh, it's a very small, uh, first to the first, a small reactor in which we can add hydrogen peroxide, and there is a you know, water uh, uh, which is called sealer to uh, make a cooling and uh, other effects. Then finally, after filtration, we got the quantum dot. It is a uh, one liter batch reactor, and uh, that is why I call it indigenous because there is uh, you know, if you go for because there is no any such uh, reactor for carbon quantum dot. So we have designed it first time in, in, in our institute and maybe in, in, the, in India, I think this is the first. Yeah, so I'd like to tell something, you know, just two, three slides on the, uh, on the its applications, because uh, if I go, if I, when I uh, look on the uh, uh, carbon quantum application, I found there are a lot of applications in, in medical science, you know, uh, in cell biology, they have studied and the toxicity. Then uh, we, we have checked its toxicity as well as the uh, antioxidant uh, properties. Then we found that the, you know this have uh, so the maximum uh, cell viability. You know there is uh, no any considerable toxicity is there with this uh, whole base carbon quantum dot. And also you know they uh, did not cause any uh, uh, damage uh, to the DNAs or the xenotoxicity because. You know, this was uh, uh, we have done with her uh, in-house uh, biotechnology divisions, um, and then uh, they uh, uh, we found that if we success in this, then definitely we can go for other uh, in uh, in vivo study. And uh, now actually, 
just two months or two, three months before our animal house is there. So we have started to do in group study, but this study was done very uh, earlier. And um, I was trying to do in vivo study in this region because, but I had not got any, uh, uh, you know, uh, good response or any facility. So, you know, this preliminary study have been excited me for the last two, three years. Then I just started to the uh, animal uh, house in our institute. So uh, if we get a good result, then let us see what we can do. But, but this image was taken in uh, the, at the time in 17. So this was a very, uh, Preliminary study actually, uh, I just told that uh, I told to the biotechnologist that can you look on the, its effect on the cancer cells so that uh, what does it do and how if we can utilize in the cancer detection because the dose contrast hasn't uh, whatever I know has been imported from uh, outside. So if we can uh, replace such uh, contrast agent with the seed, then definitely there will be uh, some possibility of using in, in such quantum plots will be. Um, uh, with the uh, cancer cell detection. So maybe because uh, I can get uh, any uh, uh, suggestion or any uh, from your uh, university because I know that a lot of expertise are there. So uh, we found that, you know, uh, when we're putting this uh, quantum dot in the cancer cell line, we found that there is a variation in the intensity of the light emission in the emission characteristic and the location uh, we can see the locations of the cancer cells. So, so on the basis of location and the emission intensity, uh, I'm a chemist, so uh, I know uh, I'm, I don't know much of things. But you know, by the locations and the its intensity of the emission, if we can go for the detection or the early detection of uh, this uh, such disease of cells, so definitely it will be a, a very good. Uh, utilization of such material because those materials have been imported from uh, uh, imported out from outside so this was a preliminary study we have done and we found the good results uh, with the uh, confocal microscopic images and this is a recent applications uh, because uh, if we uh, if we cannot utilize our uh, product in particular in the agriculture field uh, because you know, in films, our agriculture field you know, is, is going to be very, very uh, necessary through the agriculture. So, I thought that uh, I should also look into the it place on as a man of fertilizer or the plant or a growth promoter. Then, we have done a very preliminary study to in order to see the effects on his uh, you know, <coughs> plant growth as well as on the some of the very important parameters like uh, including the uh, effects on the chlorophyll and also the. Uh, metabolites, how they are affecting the plant metabolites, uh, enhancing or uh, decreasing. Then we found that because of this quantum dot is a very, you know, functionalized with the carboxylic group as well as hydroxyl group. So that is a very, uh, uh, very uh, good uh, binding sites for those uh, plant metabolites, and and there is the effect. You know, having the you can see the metabolites and antioxidants found that there. So after it is a three-month experiment we have done. It is just a spray of the carbon quantum quantum dot in the leaves. But now we are working with the root and as a fertilizer. But uh, we, we we by just spraying on the plants we got a very good result with the metabolites and the antioxidants. We found that there is an increase in the some of the very very important uh, parameters. So I hope I mean the uh, I. Try, I hope that this quantum dot is uh, going to uh, have a good applications in the uh, not, not only in the other high end applications because those bioimaging and cell applications are very high end, uh, high end applications. But this uh, agricultural or the fertilizer applications, you know, the common people they want. So if it happens or if we go further, good uh, result, then definitely it will work for application in the agricultural field. So this was the uh, I. I think this is a very, uh, very significant and essential uh, application for the future. I think uh, this is all whatever I uh, wanted to uh, uh, deliver about the technical. And uh, thank you uh, just uh, for giving me the opportunity to uh, just say about our, my research and also our institute activity. So we are we are still working on uh, quantum dot because still some industries are, are interested to, to get a technology, but uh, you know this technology has to be um, suitable for the common people. Uh,
so high end applications uh, not only high end application but we can see go for technical side and all this uh, areas then definitely they are very very interested they told me so i think thank you very much if anything if you uh, if uh, any clarification or any uh, issues are there and will answer and uh, i think this is all about okay, whatever i want to deliver today thank you thank you so much dr sakya it was very i can say very beautifully uh, you uh, put forward the whole idea of how you had developed the quantum dots it's really interesting especially the part on the high yield so now we are open for questions discussions if anybody would like to ask something hello Yes, Doctor Rakesh. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, yes, sir. Uh, you know, sir, thank you very much for your this lecture, uh, sir. I have just question about that when you are talking about this bituminous coal. So basically, when you see the coal is a nature is something like uh, amorphous nature, and uh, then how it get converted into this uh, quantum dots? Yeah, um, I have shown one slide. that you know this uh, uh, our coal is not bituminous our coal is subbituminous so that is very interesting actually actually coal is known to all you know coal is known to all but this not is mm -hmm. the coal is a young coal you know younger coal so the coal formation is a millions of years ago mm -hmm. this coal has been formed but our coal is a younger it's very lately lately formed in this nature and also this not is part coal has a very unique property Uh, because its property, its chemistry is not same with the other uh, similar, similar rank or similar type uh, time period. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know uh, uh, that is why its property is not really can be related with the other. And that was the uh, you know curiosity or that was the motivation. And then uh, we looked into the chemistry in you know, the structure. Then we found that the coal, this coal structure, chemical structure, consists of Short range of aromatic rings. If I, if I can, uh, if I am able to under, make you understand me, or if you can okay. hard to the graphite, the graphite layer. But the, this is not like a graphite layer; it's small, a smaller graphite layer. So those layer can be, you know, break, okay. exfoliate by using the oxidizing agent. So uh, okay. we have used some of the oxidizing agent or some of the. Can you know uh, reasons to exfoliate those small aromatic rings in the small carbon? And those has been purified. Those has been ultra filtered. So I have shown you a mechanism where I have shown the breakage of the small carbon structure uh, uh, into the small amount. Okay. Okay. I I hope you uh, understand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else would ask, like to ask something? Hello. Hello. Yes, Dr. Rajesh Sharma. Yeah, I'm getting out of it just a minute. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Saikia. It's a very nice uh, topic, but I have a small query. Like uh, rhizosphere is a network, right? It's having a, a huge a number of microbial growth. The question is that uh, if you use uh, this. substance there is the growth i have seen in the plant and uh, i mean appropriate growth has been taken place but the question is that what happens to the uh, microorganism the common cell group of organisms which are uh, with which help and promote uh, the plant growth is there any work that you have done in this line uh, no but we have not studied the uh interaction of quantum dot with the microbes but yes of course you are right that microbes are also playing a role in plant uh, promotion i mean the plant uh, growth promotion activity uh in this uh, work actually we want to use the quantum dot as a you know fertilizer type as a as a uh, as a growth promoter and we want to see if we use it because these quantum dots are non toxic so there is no toxic effect so we want to see if it can be uh, utilized as a you know 
something like you know i put i i have put the word nanofibrillar as about something like a mineralizer so that uh, you know it can uh, increase the metabolite activity and yet of course if we eat uh, some uh, more work has to be done in order to see the those uh, is there any other interaction with the microbes uh, this this was a very preliminary but in this uh, preliminary uh, uh, experiments we found that uh, you know uh, this is a potential effect with the uh, not only the metabolites but with the chlorophyll actually when i was presenting this uh, uh, this slide somebody also asked me that uh, how quantum dot is interacting with the you know chlorophyll so that question actually uh, i also then i got a, an, another uh, you know another thing it was very very interesting if we can uh, go for this type of you know with interaction with chlorophyll and also the microbes and definitely a uh, lot of information will be get from us okay uh, yeah dr rajesh sharma is it does it answer your question yeah 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 okay uh, any other questions from anybody otherwise i have a question for dr swakia yeah please uh, well uh, you say that uh, the photoluminescence uh, you know can be tuned right it's a tunable yeah. uh, photoluminescence and what you showed on the blue blue luminescence coming out uh, in the pictures that we saw uh, that was somehow uh, you know the excitation shows you use near uv some 365 uh, nanometers right yes, yes. so this tunable uh, thing uh, i mean how did you do it and how much more can we shift towards the uh, red band i mean because i see that the excitation source and the emission they are very close right it's like blue and sort of near uv But if we can separate it further, I think it will be. I mean, like giving the excitation source the same. If we can get a like, say, orange luminescence or red or green luminescence, is that possible? I mean, to what range you can tune? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you correctly you know you mentioned the point, the value point, and I also told that uh, you know uh, we have tried. I mean, we have tried it. Tried for the uh, broad range, which can go up to the red emission. Uh, we have we have been till now. Uh, if I say that we have been up to the green region, we have also a green uh, uh, green fluorescence uh, quantum dot from coal. You know, but we, since these functional groups, you know, particularly sulfur is a point. Sulfur and the nitrogenous uh, or the uh, carboxylic groups are there. If there the concept, there is no actually there is no any fixed uh, uh, protocol for making a broad range. There is no any fixed protocol. We have to. Uh, there is a something you know trial and error method we have to go. So yes, if we, if I can go or if somebody can go up to uh, uh, red uh, emission because uh, because researchers have been doing uh, to get a broad band by applying a lot of efforts you know uh, uh, reagents and the time and the conditions drastic conditions are there. But in case of this investigation, if we can sense uh, uh, on the cold properties and also with uh, with the uh you know uh, the sulfur and the nitrogen concentration we can play on the sulfur nitrogen concentration of coal and then definitely we can go to the uh, in, a, in a higher uh, side and we can get red emission or if we can a very broad including blue green red uh, or and yellow and if if we can combine the whole uh, if we can get a broad vision then we can make uh, out of it white light emitting you know white light emitting uh, is very very demandable so we are trying for on it you are right that uh, there is uh, only the blue and green bands are there but red band we are trying for it that is a very good uh, important point thank you we look forward to that and when you are actually mentioning the possible applications you know i got excited because uh, my research group they are mostly into uh, you know applied nanotechnology Yes, yes. So we are working with sensors. We are working in optronics, photocatalysis, mm -hmm. and uh, of late we have done some good work in uh, nano antenna design. Uh, we got a couple of patents for that. But interestingly, I think this material, uh, because the biggest problem when it comes to application is the yield, because the way we make, make nanoparticles, the yield is very nominal. Now, in this case, yield is very high. Yeah, exactly. That's yes. really exciting. So yeah, yeah. I, I would definitely love to visit you someday, and maybe if you can think of 
using your materials in some of our applications that we are trying. That will be really wonderful. I would look forward to that. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. Uh, any other questions from anybody? Or would the uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, would like to say something? Thank you, Dr. Soikya. I do. Wonderful presentation. You, and, uh, for all of us, it is, uh, indigenously, we keep saying that doing things indigenously, that's uh, your reactor made by engineering group together as something very, very uh, inspirational. And I'm sure that your lecture to this university fraternity, not all of them could be here because we had a uh, I got 58 companies from all over the country are here for placement of final students. So many teachers had to be there. They have missed an opportunity. But as I said, this is what we have to see. We just uh, uh, like have given you, like it, it is not enough to tell you, uh, say thank you, not only for your delivery lecture, but uh, for the entire fraternity of scientists and researchers of this region, you are an inspiration now. So like, thank, you. I thank you for that. But other thing I want to ask you, when you have this uh, maybe one to 20 nanometer material range, if you can separate them, carbon uh, dot, uh, separate them into one to 10 nanometer and 10 to 20 nanometer range, is it also possible to see the nitrogen and sulfur percentage that is coming with this dot, uh, like carbon dot? Actually, uh, this oh, I do not know, like whether. No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, uh, actually, uh, relevant. actually, these things, uh, this point was we considered at the first time. I mean, I mean, if we can separate the size, then their emission will be seen. Uh, yeah, but the, to separate the nanometric particular, particularly from particularly the below 10 nanometer range, is very, 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 very challenging. Uh, we could not find a protocol, we could not find a method, electrical method, engineer if we can see the voltage difference, we'll separate, we'll make a uh, electrodes, mane bahut dhoron kotha kali, kintu hebla kori bola kola. If you go for that, then it will be, you know, uh, we don't know will success or not. Kintu if you can separate, apni ko one to five nanometer, five to net ten nanometer, ten to fifteen, then it will be very very, uh, you know, uh, exciting and very very selling. Heto ami noar karon hai. That is why we stop, you know, then we go for functional energy. Then we look on the sulfur, nitrogen, and the other uh, functional energy. Asal hai size separation, it will be a bit. Because you know, a lot of uh, fluoro pores are there. That, that, will got, that will get separated if we separate the sizes. Thank you. 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 Novel idea to to bring like separate in different groups. So many other properties, like many other properties will like we may be able to discover many other things. Yeah, that's, many that's things. thank you so much. Thank you, sir. And our Dr. Borua will be in touch with you to uh, for your physical visit to the university. Uh, we really want uh, you to be here in the campus. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, and thank you, Dr. Soikia, for giving us the available time in between your ongoing conference. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to many such interactions and if possible, some collaborative research also. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.